In this video, I want to start to talk about some of the problems which are associated with the linear probability model. And the first problem we're going to talk about is the fact that it allows probabilities to be outside the range which they're normally accepted to be in. So it allows for probabilities which are outside the normal 0, 1 range. And I'm going to explain how that can come about. So using the previous example which we've spoken about, let's say I have a dependent variable which is a dummy variable indicating whether or not an individual goes to college. And this, in terms of our sample, is found to be equal to a constant, 0.3, plus 0.2 times the log of their parental wage, plus some error, epsilon. And we know from the discussion in the previous videos that what this really implies is that the probability that an individual goes to college, so that's the probability that college equals one, given that we have the log of their parental wage, is equal to 0.3 plus 0.2 times the log of their parental wage. Because when I take the expectation of this error term epsilon, it disappears. Okay, so how does this model allow for probabilities which are below the zero bound limit. Well, let's suppose that the log of parental wage is found to be equal to minus five. And that's possible because logs can be negative, even if we're taking the log of a positive number. If it's between zero and one, the log of that particular number is going to be between zero, uh, one and minus infinity, rather. Okay, so let's assume that we've got a log of parental wage, which was equal to minus five. Then from our above model, this would imply that the probability that an individual goes to college, given that we have the log of their parental wage equal to minus 5, is equal to 0.3 plus 0.2 times minus 5. And you can do the math here, this is 0.3, and then this becomes minus 1. So we just get 0.3 minus 1, which is minus 0.7. And the important thing to notice about this minus 0.7 is that it is supposed to represent a probability. But a probability of minus 0.7 doesn't mean anything. This clearly is completely nonsensical. So it's definitely possible to get values of probabilities which are less than the zero brand. Similarly, it's not difficult to imagine that we can get values above the one upper bound. So suppose that the log of parental wage was found to be 10. From the model which we've estimated, we would then go on to suppose that the probability that an individual goes to college, so that's the probability that college equals one, given that we have the log of their parental wage equal to 10, would be equal to 0.3 plus 0.2 times 10 now. And 0.2 times 10 is 2, so we're going to be left with a value of a probability, which is 2.3. So clearly that is above the normal acceptable upper bound for probabilities. It's 1.3 over that limit, and because of that, it's completely nonsensical. So what was the problem here? Well, the problem here was that our dependent variable, our well, probability, or even just thinking about it in terms of college, was supposed to represent a variable which took on a value of naught at the lower bound and a value of one on the upper bound. And when we're thinking about it in terms of its probability interpretation, so that's this equation, there are all those values in between naught and one which are associated with probabilities which are greater than naught but less than one. So we had this limited dependent variable, but we had an independent variable, in this case, log of parental wage, which wasn't actually limited. In fact, the log of parental wage can take on the values sort of at a minimum, minus infinity, and it can take on a upper bound of plus infinity. So because of this, and because we just have a linear model, that means that we're definitely gonna get values which are outside the acceptable range for our dependent variable. And this is probably the most major issue with the linear probability model it's because it allows for values which are outside the acceptable range for probabilities. I'm also going to talk about two of the other problems with the linear probability model in the next few videos. 